This changes everything. The Leafs' main roster lines for the rest of the preseason were put out. We'll break all this down, where every player is, in this video of Hattrick HQ. But first, we just want to say that 85% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you're looking for a place for daily NHL and daily Leafs content, look no further. Go down below, hit that subscribe button, become a part of the Hattrick HQ community. But with that out of the way, let's get right into the main topic of the video today, which is... These Leafs lines would be lethal. And yes, Mark Masters put out on Twitter that this was the lines at the Leafs practice today where we see Bertuzzi with Matthews and Marner, Domi with Nylander and Robertson, Nyes with Tavares Lafferty, Gregor Kemp Reeves, Cowan as an extra forward, Riley Brody on defense, McCabe Klingberg on defense as well, Gio Liljegren and Lagesson Timmins with Samson off and wall. And we're just going to start with line number one, Mark. Bertuzzi, Matthews, and Marner, we kind of got a sneak peek uh, of them last night. Uh, what was your whole thoughts uh, on this line last night uh, in the game against Ottawa? I mean, they looked great together. Obviously, there's a bit of growing pains. We have a new guy like Bertuzzi here. But I've said this so many times. Bertuzzi reminds me of just the Michael Bunting, but just more talented on offense. He's a pesty player. No one likes playing against him. He'll get on your skin. He'll hit you. He can produce. He can score. He can pass. Just overall, I'm just excited for his play. He looks outstanding. And we've seen the Matthews Marner. This line works. You have a pure goal scorer in Matthews, who still has a two-way defensive game to him as well. Same with Mitch. We have a guy that can pass. He's one of the best in the league at this. He can still score. And when you just looked at last year's line with a bunting Matthews Marner, I think we just get this, but more juice stuff with a guy like Bertuzzi just slotted next to him. Yeah, I had to agree with you. I really enjoyed watching this line uh, the other night against Ottawa. I think uh, having Bertuzzi there in the corners, uh, kind of he a couple times he like took his stick, batted it backhand between his legs out front uh, to Marner or Matthews. I just think this guy is a great fit. I'm going to say an even better fit than Michael Bunting for this Matthews and Marner line. I, I just think he's such a gritty, gets into the corners type player uh, that he's just going to have so much success with two NHL superstars uh, on his line. I think we could easily uh, see this guy get 60, maybe pushing 70 this year if he keeps playing on this line. I think this line is is definitely a, a huge win uh, for the late Maple Leafs this year, and hopefully uh, we see it with continued ses, uh, continued success uh, in this uh, pre in the rest of this preseason. But we're gonna get to the next line here. We're just gonna bring it up again. We got Domi with Nylander on center and Robertson on the right. And Mark, I know we've been very vocal on how uh, much we love uh, Nick Robertson here on the channel. And Nylander, the other night, he did go 11 for 11 on the draws, uh, playing at center. So uh, I really do think that this is a great line. I think having that kind of playmaker uh, in Domi and having two guys with just... NHL booming wrist shots, if, if you want to call it that. I just rip them top corner whenever they want. I think this is a sneaky, uh, lethal line for, for Toronto. When I first seen Nylander going center, I know a lot of people are rejecting the third line, which made you a little worried because you looked at the third line, which will we talk about soon, and there was not a lot of offense. But when you look at this, Nylander is an exceptional player. He can pass. He scored 40 last year. Overall, he's outstanding. Winning the faceoffs, we need to see him consistently do this and get more of a groove of it. Of course, the back checking and the defense need to get a little better as well. But overall, a guy that can score 40 goals, what do you want on the line with this? A playmaker. And that's exactly what Domi brings. Domi is just one of the league's top passers. He's incredible with it. He's feisty. He brings the feistiness that Bertuzzi brings as well. But you get more playmaking out of a guy like this. He can fight. He'll throw his body around. And then we've seen Nick Robertson. When he came out last night, he was like he was shot out of a cannon. He was running everywhere. He was throwing himself around. He had great chances. He had a breakaway. He just looked incredible to me. He looked rejuvenized. He looked ready for this. We've seen him show that he can play. Health is the biggest thing. He needs to stay healthy with this team. But overall, I love this offensively. You have a guy like Nylander that can score. He can pass. 
You have Domi, a guy that has proven he can score. We've seen him when he was with Montreal. And he's just an incredible passer. And just a young guy, he's not afraid to get into the corners. He runs around. He's super skilled and just an incredible shot. I've brought it up before. Matthew said he had the best shot on the league when talking about Nick Robertson. So I think this would be poised for an incredible offensively gifted line. And honestly, I'm quite excited as they do roll this out game one. Yeah, America, and I know that a lot of viewers might have heard this a lot from me if you're a long-time viewer of this channel, but I love uh, Domi. I think this guy is just such a great player. His time in Montreal, I just love that guy. One of the few Montreal Canadiens jerseys I have hanging up in my closet. I tend to keep one until that player moves on, and, and then I get another one, but uh, I just love this guy. Uh, I think playing with a guy like Nylander is only going to help him uh, produce more in the league. And, and I know you said you had some concern with Nylander's defense and stuff like that, but I think he did play well the other night uh, for checking. He was re great uh, at for checking the other night, really hemmed the defense in zones at times. Uh, I really do think throughout this preseason, we will see him develop more of a defensive edge to his game, playing that center role, and I'm really excited to see this. But we're going to get into the third line for the trial Maple please here now, which is Matthew Nye. Tavares and Lafferty and uh, Mark I think this is a great third line I think this is cr I think this could be a second line in my opinion on any other NHL team but uh, John Tavares obviously a uh, notable captain of the Toronto Maple Leafs a great player in the NHL for a very long time paired with that young stud in Matthew Nye 6-6 forward who just goes out there lays the body gets in the corners uh, and, and just gets the puck out in front of the net and, and kind of the same with, with, uh, with Lafferty too he's kind of a little grinder too and I just think this line can go out there grind some offenses down and can also score you a lot of goals yeah, if you look at Tavares, he's one of the best league's uh, centers. When you just look at him overall, he can pass, he can score. He's great on his two-way game. He's incredible on the face-offs. And you put a young guy like Nyes with him. Nyes did live with him last year, so they have this little bit of chemistry on and off the ice. You also look at a guy like Lafferty. He's fast. He's feisty. It's kind of this trend that every line has this feisty guy that will get in front of the net get into the corners with the two offensively gifted players on the line with him. I love Lafferty. Have you seen the game? I think it was yesterday or two days ago. He had a big reverse hit. Someone tried to lay the boom on him. He lit him up instead. I think this guy's great. I didn't like this when I was seeing it speculated that this would be the second line because obviously you don't have as much offense as a guy like Neil Leonard and Domi and Matthews and Marner. But you have these guys. You have big bodies. Tavares is a big guy. Nyes is a big guy. He's looking like a prototypical PF. You have a guy like Nat Lafferty who is a little smaller than some guys, but he has so much feist to his game. He'll throw his body. He's a good penalty killer. And just overall, I think this line gels perfectly. And it looks incredible when you face up against other teams' third and fourth lines, for sure. Yeah, I think this line's going to have great chem. Like you said, Nas and Tavares were roommates. Uh, I know that there was a recent report quote saying that during training camp, he's staying in a hotel to kind of focus on making the big club. But I think we'll see him... Housing with Tavares for the season because there's no way that Matthew Nice doesn't make this Toronto Maple Leafs lineup in my eyes. But I, I do really like this line. I think one of the, the player that we can really plug and play on this line is Lafferty. You know, I think maybe if Easton Cowan keeps playing the way he is, man, this guy could could steal that third line right wing job. I think I I think as you can imagine having Easton Cowan the way he's playing with Tavares and and Nice on that third line. Oh, that would be incredible. The only problem with him is we only get seven games before he we would burn the one year of the ECL, his entry-level contract. So it, you don't want to waste this and spend 20 games up, realize he doesn't fit, and then you send him down and you burn that one year off his contract. But I do think at some point this year, the Leafs do try him for a couple of games. It might be now. It might be at the end of the season if the London Knights don't make it far. But overall, Cowan looks incredible. Lafferty is an expendable guy. You have a guy like Yarn Croak. You have a couple of guys in the AHL like Bobby McMahon, Alex Steves. These guys could come up and play this right wing. I do love Lafferty's game. I don't want him off the team, but he's the type of guy that you can almost interchange with these lines and just produce at any level where he might score a bit. He'll be physical. He'll be pesty. And just like I said, this third line looks fun. Yeah, and we're going to get into the fourth line here, 
which is uh, Noah Gregor, David Kemp, and Ryan Reeves. And this is a line to me that you do not want to be on the opposite end of. I Like I've said before, with Ryan, the addition of Ryan Reeves, uh, I think when you go up against this Leafs fourth line now, you're going to be looking for some icy hot on the bench or something like that because you're going to leave the game with a few bruises and definitely a few bumps. Uh, I think this line is going to be great, a great momentum shifter type line. You know, if the Leafs are trailing or they're looking for a little bit of momentum, I think you throw this line out there. They're going around, getting in the corners, throwing big hits. Uh, I think this is such a great line for the Toronto and something that they've been missing for the, pa for the past years. Yeah, the big thing is, too, David Kampf is incredible on defense. We've seen a lot of sure. He's going to be the top center on the penalty kill. He's a guy that can go out. He'll shut down a few lines. Kind of reminds me of just... Uh, uh, Phil Deneau when the Montreal Canadiens had him and you see him in LA great defensively I think this is a guy that could get to this level of defense they're both not offensively incredible they're still great offensively I think these are guys that can put up goals who they can still pass they can still do things on offense but they're almost your defensive specialist Gregor right now is on a PTO as well I do certainly think he does get signed to the Leafs team he looked incredible he's fast he can get the puck around feisty grindy he's physical Physical. He just looks like outstanding, especially on the fourth line where you want to add more speed. And I've said this before, Ryan Reeves, I think he's going to be a massive impact on this team, not just on the ice when you need a big hit to send a message to the team so no one messes with you. A situation where you're like, hey, we need to throw a hit, get everyone amped up, more physicality. This is the guy you need on your team. And I really like this fourth line because it reminds me of Tampa's where you have a guy like Pat Maroon, Corey Perry, and Belmar, where they're just guys you didn't want to play against. They were going to hit. They were going to be physical. They were going to cause problems and still kind of hem you in the zone. I think this is the prime up like situation for a fourth line, and I'm ecstatic for it. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a great line to watch. I know we're definitely going to get some great voice clips out of Ryan Reeves this year, so I'm looking forward to that. But we're going to get into the defense. We're just going to touch on them here. We got uh, Riley with Brody, uh, McCabe with Klingberg, Giordano with Liljegren, and Lagason with Timmins. Uh, obviously, I was a bit surprised here to see Lagason here on this list, but he did have a great game uh, in that first preseason matchup against Ottawa. But, Mark, out of all these lines, which one really stands out to you as being the best Leafs defensive line. It's definitely going to be either Riley Brody. We've seen it work before. It's just they complement each other so well. Brody's just this analytic sterling. He does amazing on defense. He can still move the puck. Riley's a two-way guy as well that can get pucks on the net, make great passes, go on the rush even. So you pair these guys together, they look incredible. When you look at the second pairing, Klingberg and McCabe, I think it's the same situation, but you get a physical guy out of McCabe. He's great defensively. He'll throw the body. He's just a big guy. He plays bigger than he actually is. And you match him up with an offensively gifted like Klingberg. We seen yesterday when they scored a goal to send it to OT. Klingberg shot from the point which they caused chaos in front when this shot went on. It was just a rock of the shot right on net, caused a big rebound for Marner to score. I think he's perfect for this team, and especially with McCabe. And Gio and Lilgrim, we've seen this last year. We get a vet. We get a guy that's up and coming, still a bit of defensive woes, but he looks incredible this season. And I think overall, this does look really good. I think everyone complements each other perfectly. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. There's not much to add to that. You really kind of broke it down really nice there. Obviously, I do really like Klingberg. I think his game last night or the other night was just phenomenal. I think uh, I think he's definitely going to take over this role of the power play line one because that shot he has on him, man, that is something else. I think there's definitely going to be a shoe, uh, or a few sheets of glass changed in the Scotiabank Arena this year because uh, that guy has a some shot on him. But I do really think, uh, like I've been vocal on this channel before, is that the Leafs have improved like a lot defensively this this offseason, and I really do think that's going to contribute to their success because they they got a lot of guys who can shut it down defensively. They you know they got Brody, uh, they got McCabe. I really was impressed with McCabe's game last uh, or the other night as well. I think he was throwing the body around even in preseason. His, his stick work was amazing. Uh, I'm just really excited for this Leafs decor this year. I think we might see a change up a little bit, uh, maybe at trade deadline. Uh, but I'm really interested to see what. 
what, what Simone Benoit can offer to uh, this Leafs uh, decor as well. I know I uh, recently he's been seen in, in a red practice jersey, so he is dealing with something. But hopefully he gets out there in this preseason because this is a guy who I'd really like to see back there. Probably like an Arbor Jack guy type player. Uh, I think uh, the Leafs could really benefit from that. But we're going to get into the goalies here, which we have talked about here previously on the channel. Obviously, we got Samsonov and Wall. And the other night, I know Wall, Wall kind of struggled a little bit. I know it's only preseason. It's his first game of the year. But I'm really big on Joseph Wall. I think this guy's going to have a phenomenal year for the Toronto Maple Leafs. But you can't pass up on Samsonov either. He's a great goaltender. Has proven to be a great goaltender in this league. I just think they got two studs there with also Martin Jones. Martin Jones had a great, like, a relief last night I get or the other night I guess you would call it I guess he came in for relief just in the preseason I think he looked great as well three great goalies I mean that's got to mean some type of success don't it Mark yeah that's the big thing I've said this in a video a little while ago where Samsonov and Wall if you combine them they have less games played than Martin Jones so it's always nice to have this veteran this guy that can kind of just be there, mentor these guys. I hope he doesn't get claimed on waivers or if the Leafs do find a situation where you could make him his cap compliance by moving someone or just freeing up some space. I think three of these guys would be perfect as the Leafs goalie. Samsonov, we've seen how incredible he was last year. Joseph Wall is going to have a little bit of growing pains that we've seen in the playoffs. We've seen at the end of the year. He looks incredible. The guy is only 25. He has so much potential in this league. And Martin Jones also did have just under 30 wins last year. So you have three guys that you can trust to be 1A, 1B, whatever way you put it in. And overall, I think this is just incredible for the Leafs goaltending. I think it's one of the best constructed teams we've seen in some time, and it's just the start of the year. We have so much trades that could happen, so many sign-ins. It's just all open in the air, and it's exciting. Yeah, this Leafs team looks phenomenal right now. Just looking at these lines, I think they're going to have a hell of a year this year. I think, obviously, like we've said before, they're definitely going to be competing for a cup uh, with the roster they have. It's just going to be a fun, a much more fun Toronto team to watch this year, I think. You know, he kind of got those guys that go out, lay the body, got the guys who can go out there and rip it, uh, got the guys go out there who can dangle around like Datsuk out there. This is going to be a great year for the Toronto Maple Leafs, a fun team to watch. And when you're watching fun hockey... Doesn't matter if they win or lose. Uh, I think uh, I've definitely had my fair share of that with Montreal last year. But it is it is fun hockey to watch nonetheless. But we're going to get into everybody's favorite topic, comment of the day. And the comment of the day today goes to Pat G Mafia, our boy Pat G. I know he's featured here a lot, but we love you, Pat. Thanks for the support. He says good for Willie in the face-off zone. And obviously... Uh, you know, Willie had such a great game there the other night playing center. Uh, it's going to be really exciting to see what happens throughout the rest of this preseason because I do think that we will see William Nylander play center opening night against Montreal Canadiens. Going to be a great game to watch. I'm excited. I know me and Mark are going to be uh, in, in the basement watching it, maybe having a few cold ones like maybe some of you guys watching this. But if you enjoyed the video, make sure to go down below, hit the, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, uh, and make sure to comment down below what are your thoughts on this whole Leafs lineup. Maybe you'll get f featured on the next comment of the day. But I've been KC alongside my co-host Mark Pye. Keep your stick on the ice.